Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Uh, this video is going to be showing a few uh, things that I put together to help out in the shop. Um, and some of them, uh, first time they'll be used, is on a couple more Kubota wheel modifications. On this particular tractor, they want to turn it into a row crop tractor which means that they need 60 inch centers and the wheels right now are at 55 inch centers so basically I need to move the rims out two and a half inches so I started in the lathe and the interrupted cuts were a little much um, for how well I thought it was secured in the chuck so I decided to go to the super spacer and order to machine the welds out In order to maintain the integrity of the wheel, I do not like to machine into the rim. I try to go as close to the rim as I can and then physically bust the centers out and then just do a little light grinding on the rim before I uh, weld the centers back in. These rims will be flipped over in order to put the valve stems on the outside. Um, which works out nice because by the time they get flipped over and then moved out, it'll put the welds uh, real close to the original spot. The wheels I did before these that I showed in a video uh, had really thick centers and I was able to take a block and physically just drive on it with a big sledgehammer to break them loose. Uh, these aren't the case. These are just uh, press centers. Uh, so I was going to need something in order to help physically uh, get them apart. So if you followed any of my older videos, I picked up this big plate at a scrapyard uh, a few years ago. And I figured it was time to um, put it together. This particular plate, basically 48 inch by 31 inch by two and three eighths inch thick. The plate weighs just under a thousand pounds, somewhere between 950 and a thousand. And it has 310 three quarter inch tapped holes. For those that follow my channel, you know I love to repurpose uh, certain pieces of equipment whenever I can um, into something more uh, useful. And quite some time ago I did some horse trading and part of the trade was an old big table saw right here, a Whitney 177. Um, it sat outside for who knows how long. Um, the table was drilled and modified. And I knew I would never put it back to a table saw. But I knew that the base would come in handy someday. And I decided to use the base for my new welding table. Now I was told that the saw was a running saw before it got put out, so um, I make the assumption that the motor's gonna be fine. Here you can see where they drilled the table in order to bust it, bust it out, and the old table just ended up going into scrap load. But the motor, I have a plan for the motor and the mount. I have a 1917 Oliver 16 inch joiner that I would like to um, readapt another motor to it. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, that this may be a fun project down the road uh, to adapt to it. And I can uh, use the mount, modify the mount. Um, but anyway, we'll see. Right now I'm just kind of gutting everything so just to the bare uh, base. And here, this is part of the mount that held the motor. And a lot of it can just be uh, machined off of it where all I have left is just a dovetail portion.
here just kind of showing some of this stuff can be uh, actually cut off and totally removed. Okay, we now have the base totally stripped and it has beautiful, nice machine flat surfaces uh, in order for the top uh, to made up to. And the base alone comes in at about 550 pounds. So here we have the, the table at about 950. So the combination of the base and the table is right at 1500 pounds. For right now, I found two holes on the table that lined up with the two corner holes, bolt holes. And I just put a couple half inch bolts in in, in order just to hold it for right now. Because uh, I kind of need to use it on the wheel project. And then later on I'll kind of center it up where the holes are and then drill and tap uh, from the bottom, you know, to anchor the base to the table. Now this is one of the best parts of this base, for me anyway, is my skinny pallet jack happens to fit it perfect. So for moving around a 1,500 pound table, um, you know, it just makes it real handy uh, to move it wherever I need it. And what I'm thinking is on the end of the, the side of the base where the motor was, either hang clamps or maybe build a drawer that kind of slides out uh, just to keep some hardware in. And here I'm just knocking off some of the top surface of the rust just to give me something, you know, flat enough uh, to do the rims. And then eventually, I don't know if I'll ever have a ground precision or not. You know, for a welding table, I probably wouldn't need to do that. Here my thoughts were, in order to get the centers broke out, there's four holes already existing in the rim, and I found four holes in the tabletop that fit the holes. So I'll set the rim on, and then I'll drill some holes in another 5 8 thick plate, which is showed right here. And that way, when I drop it on the center and bolt it down tight, when I beat on it, that thick 5 8 plate's keeping all the centers, you know, fairly, uh, fairly true and not letting me, uh, you know, bend one corner in, you know, while I'm, while I'm hitting on it. Now these rims are pretty flexible. I could keep tightening and tightening until I actually bent 
the rims permanently and that's what I did not want to do so I just put a nice load on it and then just took the hammer you know and then just kind of worked it to break it loose Here I'm just grinding that edge off, you know, getting it flat and prepared for the for the new weld. And here I just grind until the uh, old weld uh, is disappears. Eventually I'm going to have to run a tap through all 310 holes. But for right now I'm just picking uh, one hole that I could put a three quarter rod uh, for clamping the, uh, the rim up in. In order to get my spacing correct, what I needed, I found this old pipe flange and I didn't have to take uh, remove much off at all to give me uh, the correct thickness. So this will uh, go down on the table before the rim center goes on the table. Here I'm flipping it over and I know my chuck runs nice and true. Uh, so I want to machine both surfaces to where I know they're parallel. Um, to try to eliminate any kind of wobble when I'm done welding the wheel up.
Right here you can see the slight wobble. These are not precision machine centers, they're just stamped. And I want to simulate it like it was bolted up on the hub before I weld it to the, or tack it to the rims. So what I'm doing here is just dropping a sleeve on and then I'll put an old polar across the top. So when I clamp everything down to the table, I know the bolt pattern where it bolts to the hub you know, it's going to run about as true as I can get it. Here I got all the surfaces that need to be prepped for welding um, done and ready to start assembling. These wheel centers have four areas that'll have a continuous weld and right there on each end of those is where I'll tack them. So there'll be eight tacks basically holding the rim to the center before I take them out and do the final welding. And here I'm just doing a little measuring, make sure that uh, I got my spacing right, make sure I got my uh, plus two and a half inches uh, per wheel. Okay, on the morning I was getting ready to start welding these up, I happened to pop on the Craigslist and I've been wanting to find a Millermatic 200 welding machine for quite some time at a reasonable price. And three hours previous when the guy posted it, he had this Millermatic 200. And I used a Millermatic 200 at work and it's just been an awesome machine. And he had this machine posted, I thought, at a uh, ridiculous low price. He had the machine listed for $375. And if I rounded it up to $400, he would throw in this bender that was bolted uh, behind the barn. So some of the things that came with was an ownership tank, which I'll swap out and I'll go... Uh, full-size tank on the machine came with uh, you know plenty of dust that seems to knock off pretty good
Also came with a couple boxes of wire. And he said not long ago he put a Radnor Pro gun on it. And just the gun cost way more than I paid for everything. And it came with some consumables that went with the gun. You could tell it hasn't been used much, just sitting in a barn, just kind of showing some tarnish. It came with uh, the different sets of wheels. Also came with a nice heavy duty extension cord. That box I had to uh, go bigger screws. They were all stripped out and the wires were all frayed so I had to shorten everything up and then put a new mail end on. And here I did about three little sample runs to where I thought I had a machine set where I could uh, try it out on its first job. And here I got the rims tacked up ready to weld them. And here are the first four real welds with the new welding machine. And one thing I did do uh, my welding positioner has a ground uh, that goes right to it, but I wasn't really sure how good of a ground I was getting through the chuck, and I definitely didn't want to have to start grinding a burger weld out because I didn't have a good ground. So here you can see I just kind of ground a little spot on the rim and then put the ground cord right to the rim just to make sure I had a good ground. Here they're ready just uh, for a little light grinding and I'll apply some primer and then my part's done. Um, they got a guy at the tractor dealership that'll uh, take care of painting them the Kubota orange. Now in those clips it almost looks like two different color orange uh, wheels. Uh, the only difference is when the sun's shining down on the wheels, my iPhone definitely picks it up as a different orange. is like the color you're looking at right here, but they are the same, same rim. And here's a clip of the rims painted, the tires mounted, and then back on the tractor. And now they have a 60 inch center to center pattern to match the back. This year, once we get past rains, I am definitely going to start tearing in 
to my house and do some improvements on my house and I have a big deck that's going to get rebuilt and underneath the deck will be enclosed and the space will be added to my existing shop. So I've been moving stuff into storage and while I was hauling this load to storage I ran across uh, some guy wandering around under the Rivas the bridge with a sign work for uh, food so I thought I would uh, give him a try and uh, put him to work. To my surprise he ended up being uh, quite handy as a worker and uh, definitely you could tell he had some experience uh, with tools. Well, I want to give a big thank you to Chuck over at Outside Screwball again for putting together another great meet and greet. Had a great time, and the gentleman that hosted it at his house just had an incredible display, as you can see in this short video. Um, I thought I had a few items, but no comparison. Hey Tom, what's in your pocket, bud? What's in your pocket? <laughs> We've got to check the pockets on the way out. <laughs> The owner of all this has a company that is sheet metal and all the things you see up on the ceiling, all the different ductwork fittings is what uh, what they manufactured. And here is some of the stuff that I picked up for my shop from the swap meet. Uh, a couple old machine uh, machinery handbooks. I think they were like a dollar a piece. I'm more of an opportunist buyer. Uh, these old proto wrenches, you could see they practically brand new and they were ridiculously cheap, you know. So I, uh, I threw them in the pile. Here's an old Starrett planer gauge. I think the original price on that, they were asking like $20 for. The gentleman that put on um, the event actually had several tables with a bunch of tools up. And towards the end, he set out a big box of Sawzaws, Milwaukee drills. And he wanted $10 for the drills and $15 for the Sawzaws. I bought the exact same proto polar as this back in the early 80s uh, when I was working on tractors and I still keep it at work 
And I thought, you know, when I seen that on the table, I thought it would be pretty nice uh, for home. And then uh, this Mac angle grinder was, I thought, real cheap also. So grabbed it. And then, of course, I tend to uh, collect some old stuff. If I think it looks neat or whatever, um, I'll pick it up. And I just thought that this uh, particular wrench was kind of interesting. Now, this is the one that I thought was really cool. Um, don't know how old the patent date is, but, you know, it's got to be one of the first multi-tools ever made. Kind of got your wrench, your pliers, your screwdriver, your wire cutters. I thought it was uh, pretty neat. This year I bought this whole tray of drill bits and then in the white clear, the clear tub to the right, uh, there was three reams in there that had some rust on them. And I think I gave like $5 for all those. And down in the bottom, there's a nice carbide uh, countersink. That's probably, can't buy that for five bucks. And all the drill bits are actually in a really nice shape. Just a little bit of surface rust on some of them. This is probably my favorite item that I picked up at the swap meet, and it's a Her Herman Schmidt Precision Vice. And other than one little nick in it, just incredible shape. At first, you couldn't even hardly move it. You know, the oil was just kind of dried up a little bit and was stuck, but just worked it a couple times. And, um,. So anyway, that's probably one of my favorite items from the swap meet. And right there, you can see where somebody kissed it with a stone. Um, but otherwise, very nice shape. I got a fairly good collection of uh, zero to one inch mics, but this 106-102 Michitoyo mic Chuck had from Outside Screwball, and I thought it was very interesting. Uh, I've never seen one of them like it before, uh, so I had to have it. And the unique thing about this is the spindle does not rotate. You can see the portion rotating and the portion that's not. That part, the spindle, and that part just slides straight back and forth. And I thought that was very interesting. The micrometer is a tenth of a thousandth. It's got the uh, veneer lines, or each line represents a half a thousandth. Anyway, I just thought it was very interesting, uh, micrometer. So I picked it up. One thing that caught my eye too is how much larger the spindle was. Here I'm showing a comparison between a Starrett. And you can just see the difference in the diameter.
and you can see it's got the tungsten carbide uh, tips on both ends. Towards the end of the swap meet, uh, there was something that I never noticed. It's a 13 to 1 gearbox reduction. It's going to have planetary gears on the inside. And here you can see that I uh, checked up on the input and I'm just holding the output. So in order to make it work, you have to anchor the main housing from turning. And in here you'll see I'll just pull up and the lathe to stop so one of the bolts hits it you know and then you can see the actual uh, gear reduction in it Now looking at this uh, gear reduction, it looks like the output shaft does all the mounting of this unit and then all you need to do is just grab one of those bolts with a bracket just to keep it from, uh, from rotating. And I actually have the perfect project uh, in mind that I want to put it on. The guy I bought it from said he took it apart, everything looked great and he wanted like 10 bucks for it. The project I have in mind for it is a very large turntable that I have been working on. I haven't really showed any videos of it yet, but it will be a big series of videos. But anyway, here you can see the 13 to 1 reduction that's going to be mounted on the input of another 30 to 1 gearbox. And in that 30 to 1 gearbox, comes out of the front, go, comes out of the gearbox into this clutch, and then that's a worm drive. And this is going to be, this is actually the machine um, in its original form that was for woodworking, and I will be converting it to metalworking. This picture already shows some of the modifications. You can see where I have the pipe wrench or the pipe driver there, which I don't think I'll use that anymore. Uh, but anyway, this is just a short little clip, kind of a sneak peek of my very large rotary turntable that I've been working on. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to check out my video. Thanks for watching.